On 4th February, we honor St. John de Brito, also known by his Indian title and name Arul Anandar, a martyr, priest, missionary, confessor, and preacher. Born as João de Brito in Lisbon in Portugal on 1st March 1647, he was martyred at Oriur in Tamil Nadu in India on 11th February 1693 at the age of 46. St. John was dedicated at birth to St. Francis Xavier, and his family was known to the king at that time, King Pedro. A terrible illness made John turn to St. Francis Xavier, a saint so well loved by the Portuguese, and when in answer to his prayers he recovered, his mother vested him for a year in the dress worn in those days by the Jesuit fathers. From that time, John's heart burned to follow the example of the Apostle of the Indies, and he gained this wish. On 17 December 1662, he entered the novitiate of the Society at Lisbon, and 11 years later, in spite of the most determined opposition of his family and of the court, he left all to go to convert the Hindus of Madura. When Blessed John's mother knew that her son was going to the Indies, she used all her influence to prevent him leaving his own country and persuaded the papal nuncio to interfere. God who called me from the world into religious life now calls me from Portugal to India was the reply of the future martyr. Not to answer the vocation as I ought would be to provoke the justice of God. As long as I live, I shall never cease striving to gain a passage to India. He travelled to the missions of Madurai in southern India, present-day Tamil Nadu, in 1673, and preached the Christian religion in the region of the Maravar country. He renamed himself Arul Anandar in Tamil, and for 14 years he toiled, preaching, converting, baptizing multitudes, at the cost of privations, hardships, and persecutions. John at first hoped to win over members of both the higher and the lower castes to Christianity, and so he dressed and lived as an Indian ascetic. He attracted so many members of the lowest caste to Christianity that members of the royalty of Madura saw John as a threat to the caste system. They imprisoned and tortured him, but then released him. The Jesuits recalled him to Portugal in 1687 and worked as a missions procurator. King Pedro III, his childhood friend, who was now the king, wanted him to stay, but in 1690, after four years, he was allowed to return to Goa and went back to the same territory where he had once been held captive with 24 new missionaries. The Madurai mission was a bold attempt to establish an Indian Catholic Church that was relatively free of European cultural domination. As such, Brito learned the native languages, went about dressed in yellow cotton, and lived like the people he was seeking to convert, abstaining from every kind of animal food and from wine. St. John de Brito tried to teach the Catholic faith in categories and concepts that would make sense to the people he taught. This method, proposed and practiced by Father Roberto di Nubelli, an Italian Jesuit missionary to southern India, used a novel method of adaptation to preach Christianity, adopting many local customs of India which were not contrary to Christianity, met with remarkable success. Brito remained a strict vegan until the end of his life, rejecting meat, fish, eggs, and alcohol, and living only on legumes, fruits, and herbs. Like St. John the Baptist, he died a victim to the anger of a guilty woman, whom a convert king had put aside, and like the precursor, he was beheaded after a painful imprisonment. St. John's preaching had led to the conversion of a Marava prince who had several wives. When Tandiriya Tevan, the prince, was required to dismiss all his wives but one, a serious problem arose. One of the wives was a niece of the neighbouring king who took up her quarrel and began a general persecution of Christians. 
Brito and the catechist were taken and carried to the capital, Ramnath. Thence he was led to Oriur, some thirty miles northward along the coast, where he was executed on 4th February, 1693. Placing all our petitions before him today, let us all together pray. O God, who filled the heart of St. John de Brito with an ever-growing love for you and for your people, in order to spread the message of salvation in our land, grant we beseech you that, strengthened by his witness and his intercession, we may cherish the good news and announce it with courage to everyone around us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen.